des conventions internationales d'environnement. International Environmental Convention signed in Rio during the Earth Summit of 1992 testify that the manner in which states define the problem, try to measure it and try to bring solutions. International conventions aim to regulate, to avoid the erosion of biodiversity and the effects of climate change and are hugely important in the diffusion of uh, laws and representations and geopolitical balance. The appearance of the concept of adaptation marks a deep change in the transformation of our societies and ecosystems. And paradoxically, it's in the climate convention that one finds discussions of the notion of adaptation and not as expected in the Convention about Biological Diversity. The concept of adaptation is highly political for a number of reasons. First of all, it is opposed to notions of sustainable development, which was meant to reconcile the economic, social, environmental aspects with the notion of adaptation. The issue is to address an outside threat. Uh, humans are no longer masters of their own destiny. And this concept of uh, adaptation is also in opposition to the concept of attenuation, the reduction of greenhouse gases. When you talk about adaptation, uh, many have said that adapting means giving up, renouncing uh, the effects of greenhouse gases, and therefore renouncing any uh, determination to change our modes of production and consumption. And adaptation was also a concept put forward by uh, developing countries to justify a number of benefits in uh, negotiations. And this is when uh, came the ideas of climate justice or ecological debt or protection of biodiversity, and these came on the table, and the recognition of local knowledge. So let me remind you how this issue of uh, climate change emerged. There's a very high correlation between the emissions of CO2 here and changes in temperature. The Convention about Biological Diversity is based on science, on the expertise of the intergovernmental group on climate change, climate experts. You can see here on the red line that the scenario until 2100 will bring us to a temperature that would be higher by 4.5 degrees Celsius. So the objectives of the Climate Convention discuss the concentration of uh, greenhouse gases, the attenuation, of course. The ultimate objective is to stabilize the content in greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. And attenuation is just a consequence of this struggle to uh, result. So adaptation must naturally adapt to climate change. So what you can see here is that there's a problem of uh, greenhouse gases uh, pollution measured in tons of CO2 with uh, a threshold that needs to be shared by all developed nations. And this is uh, created with a carbon market, emission rights, um, exchange between rich countries. In Copenhagen, uh, this model falls apart for a number of reasons. First of all, one notes that the, effect, that the emissions of greenhouse gases are continuing to increase and that ecosystems will find it very difficult to adapt. And a more political reason, developing countries um, are not in favor of the attenuation approach because they consider it to be a manner to block uh, their own use of their natural resources, use of energy or forestry. In addition, developing countries are also the first victims of climate change, uh, of increased flooding, uh, drought, while historically they are not responsible for the accumulation of greenhouse gases. So the concept of equity will be very much linked to the issue of adaptation, and this renews 
developmental aid. And in Copenhagen, developing countries, which have become a great emitters of greenhouse gases, such as China, no longer accept that it's the Secretariat of Climate Convention that dictates their energy policy. They uh, suggested voluntary national contributions, INDC, where each country, based on its geographical or economic or political characteristics, will suggest its own attenuation strategies, attenuation and adaptation strategies. This resulted in the Paris Accord in December 2015, in Article 7, where the attenuation policies are placed on an equal footing with adaptation policies. And there uh, is a return of the issue of biodiversity. Biodiversity then appears as one of the uh, key or strategic variables of adaptation policies because it is involved in farming policies, in health policies, in uh, the fight against poverty and inequality, which results in major objectives in the field of uh, climate smart agriculture, questions of uh, food security, adaptation and attenuation. And for the forests, the soil is also designated as a potential uh, carbon resource. So na nature-based solutions, solutions that rely on ecosystems and their capacity to regulate uh, also uh, become key, as do territorial approaches such as the associations of major cities. Um, are also going to have access to the negotiating table. And this brings the local dimension back to the fore. A global problem can only, cannot only uh, be addressed by a global UN-led uh, solution. And in the local and social scale, of course, traditional knowledge also is taken into account. So biodiversity in its environmental and social aspects comes back to the fore. So of course, these national contributions, where are they leading us? The first issue, of course, is the threshold, the level of global warming. The sum total uh, of those, of course, leads us to believe that we will be far beyond three degrees. The second important aspect, the funding of these policies, both attenuation and adaptation policies. And of course, uh, this remains very much in the air. Thank you.